Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, businesses, and engaging topics that you are going to find so much fun. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Today, I'm going to introduce somebody very interesting. His name is Wankemi Gongar. He's out of South Florida, and he is known as a spiritual coach. Lucky for me, I can call him Coach G. Coach G, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Ricky. Thank you. I'm excited that you're here. We're going to jump in because there's so much we want to ask you about. First of all, and I told you this earlier, I need to ask you, what does your name mean? Because it's so different. Can you tell us what it means? Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my, my name is actually from West Africa. Um, that's where I grew up. And uh, the first one, one Kemi, uh, means a person that does many different things. And uh, the last name Gangar is a uh, strong man. Okay. So basically yeah. the strong man who does many things. Exactly. I like it. I like it a lot. (laughs) Thanks so much for spending some time with us. Now, I know that you said you're in the area, the South Florida area, someplace near, where was it? Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, Fort Fort Lauderdale. Lauderdale. Excuse me. me, Nice. Oh, you're okay. Take your time. Okay. So, and you are considered a spiritual life coach. Is that about right? Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm referred to by by people I work with. (laughs) Okay. Well, talk to me a little bit about what you do with the people that you work with, because you hear so much about life coaching now anyway, and there are all kinds of life coaches. So what is it that you do differently or different than other other life coaches we may know about? Well, I use my spiritual uh, uh, abilities. Some people might say prophetic. Some people, um, you know, might say spiritual intuition. But um, so instead of me kind of trying to have a specific um, plan that the person fits into coaching wise, I kind of go to God, the universe, and I ask the question of, okay, how do, how do I deal with this situation that the person is dealing with or how do I approach it? So I get specific messages and that's how I approach, uh, you know, the person. And mm-hmm. it's not always the case that the person is a good fit for what I do also. So there are times that I have to say no to the person uh, that I can't help them because I don't have a message for them or anything specific going on in that, in that sense. So, um, but that's, that's usually how it starts out. Yeah. Usually how it starts out. So now how long have you been in the business, if you will? Uh, You know, business wise, I've been doing this since 2010. Um, Mm. But in the sense of, you know, having this ability, I pretty much, um, started to discover it in junior high uh, through various encounters and dreams and aspirations of, uh, you know, just dealing with different things, you know, in the supernatural realm, I guess you could say, you know, because, because, you know, I mean, what I do, a lot of people think is spooky kind of, you know, (laughs) because they don't really understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's not, it's not like something that fits in the five senses for say. So it's kind of uh, out there a little bit, but um, it is, it is super, um, it's just, it's just like a super, I don't know how to say it, a guy gets really, but people mm-hmm. need it. People need that other side. That's not normal. Yeah. People need that other side. That's not uh, two plus two equals four. I, I, I guess right. I would say. So, yeah, yeah. So I've been doing this pretty much since junior high, but I, wow. I just, I, yeah, um, I was in education for, for many years. Mm-hmm. Working with the knuckleheads, as you know, <laughs> as you could say. Uh, and then you know, people were like, "Hey, man, you know, you, uh, you know, you just have this this thing about you. Whenever you say stuff to me, man, it just happens." I'm like, "Well," wow. and then, you know, and so it just kind of went from there. You know, here so you are. always knew what it was, but you didn't really try to explain it to people. You just kind of let the gift flow, per se, right? Per se, yeah, per se. Um, you know. Uh, obviously the church was a big part of discovering a lot of this in inside yeah. myself um, mm-hmm. you know because I would always be put on the spot um, in the sense that I would I would have I would get messages and and I would be told hey go tell this person I'm like man you know I'm not I'm not comfortable going over there right <laughs> talking about this I just want to stay in my own little corner but it would you know when you get these messages you are you are responsible 
to mm. because uh, people really need that that help. So it, you know, you know, that, it became apparent to me that, you know, wow. it was something serious that had to be done. So. Yeah. And you said you discovered your gift, if you will, in junior high school. I cannot imagine what that would have been like. You know, you're in the junior high school. And that is already such a strange time in our lives. And then you have this other thing going on. How difficult was it for you growing up with this gift? Well, you know, I didn't even think it was a gift. I just thought it was normal. Uh, mm. I thought everyone just understood things. They knew things, oh, wow. uh, you know, and, uh, you know, and, 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 and like you said, there were certain battles that 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 I that I endured back back in the day, uh, family issues, obviously, and mm -hmm. you know, grew, uh, coming from a different uh, country and growing up in the United States, um, you know, and you know, trying to trying to be, I guess, cool and hang out with friends that you know sure. would, would like you, kind of thing. But then, you know, um, I mean, it it pretty much started with having a lot of dreams about people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I would have these dreams, and um, and then they would, they would happen. Uh, I right. would see things on the, on the television set. And then a few days later, my dad would be watching TV and I'll be like, Hey, I saw that a few days back. What's going on uh -huh. here? So, um, but I just thought, Hey, this is just a normal thing for everybody. And that's, that's where I, I kind of took wow, it Wow. That's crazy. And as I got so, older, I realized, no, this wasn't, yeah, this was not everyone's thing. So no, <laughs> it isn't everyone's <laughs> thing. No. So then when it became a business or how did the business part of that come about? Yeah, um, well, I just got burnt out doing educational stuff. Um, I had been in there for 15 years and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all the politics. And then um, also just dealing with the church in the sense of a general, you know, the church, I really felt like uh, my abilities and my gift wasn't just for the church. It was it was something that I had to take outside of the church. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, in 2010, I just decided, you know what, let me make this, uh, I, I guess, a business, I guess. So, right. you know, and I took the name Coach G from from me, you know, playing sports back in the day and soccer and okay. all that stuff. And then coaching later on. So they, you know, I got the name Coach G and it was easier because people can't say one Kemi or you know, <laughs> stuff. Like, yeah. So Coach G was just so I just took the name Coach G mm -hmm. and then, you know, yeah, it just went from there. And um uh, and then, you know, as I started to talk to people, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I realized that this was a, this was specific. It wasn't really for everybody. Right. Uh, and I wasn't allowed to talk to everybody. There are some people that I really um, like thought I could help. And then there just would be nothing. It just wow. would be nothing coming between us. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. But you got to do, but you, can't you see something? Can't? I'm like, no, I don't see anything. Yeah. And I'm not going to force something right. if I don't see it. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. um, cause I'm responsible for this, you know? So, yeah, so that's, 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 where that's huge. Yeah. You know, that you take it seriously like that because how many people would be like, oh yeah, you're paying me money. Uh, give me a second. I'll pull something together <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah, but exactly. for, to hear you say, no, this is serious and I'm not yeah. going to make it up for you. That, yeah. th that is huge. I mean, you literally take that seriously and I'm so excited to hear that. So let me ask you, what kind of people do you work with? You know, where, who are your clients? Yeah, most of my clients, as of now, they are from the business world, uh, mm -hmm. you know, CEOs, CFOs, uh, you know, principals of high schools and uh, even wow. professors of, uh, you know, and I work with a few entertainers. Like right now, I got some uh, musicians that are that are on my client list. Mm -hmm. um, so people uh, and it's not because I'm choosing to work with with big time people. or It's just the fact that I talk to leaders mm -hmm. and I and so. I, you know, my, I guess if you want to say the calling of my life in the sense of the church word, right. Right. Is that I help people get on their platform or if they're on their platform, to encourage them as they're on that platform. Because right. one of the things that I try to, to tell people is that, you know, um, like, especially these leaders that, that mm -hmm. I'm shown to speak mm -hmm. to is that you have a platform and uh, are you on that platform? Mm -hmm. And because if you're not on that platform, there's an imposter on your platform wasting Ooh. other the people sitting in the audience's time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so are you ready to be on your platform? And if you are, are you doing the things that you need to do to, to make sure that you are given the information that God, the universe gave you to give to your audience? Right. So 
so it is it is um it is it, it is wow. just from that focus that i that i kind of you know go mm-hmm. from so, i mean that is so huge what you said about you know are you on your platform and if you're not there is an imposter up <laughs> yeah. there wasting yeah. the audience's time i mean yeah. and so many of us you know we think we're doing what we're supposed to be doing when in actuality right. Right. we're not in the right place no no Oh, wow. And as leaders, that can really be detrimental to right. a company, to a group of people, to a team, to a community, you know, right. if you're not in the right place. My gosh. So let me ask you now. So I know you say you have a pretty extensive client list right now. Do you take I know you said earlier you don't you don't work with everybody. Right. So how do people find you? I mean, is it a lot of word of mouth? Do you have the website type deal? How do people find you? Yeah, I uh, I'm kind of a secretive <laughs> person, and you know, uh, I'm you know you're not gonna find a lot of advertisements about me. I don't do mm-hmm. a lot of social media stuff, uh, so I don't necessarily have a website. Because mm-hmm. uh, and the thing is, the clientele that I usually have, a lot of them don't want to really be known, and mm-hmm. uh, or they don't want to be, uh, I guess, in the spotlight. So it's a sure. it's a good way for me to stay, you know, kind of in, in this little, you know corner and then they're you know because it makes them comfortable like okay yeah because a lot of times what why they come to me is because i'm not so like out there mm-hmm. uh, but but uh, as of after this interview i think that's going to change right because like <laughs> you know i'm not really used to doing things like these but yeah most of my stuff has always been from uh, from word of mouth mm-hmm. um, um so yeah i don't have a website as of now i know i've people always say you need a website you need a website you need to get on linkedin you need to do that that but, um, you know, it's just something maybe that that will be considered later on. But, right. Yeah. You know, it, the one thing I need to ask you, because you hear a lot about people with this sort of a gift and who do these things, but they can't really hear, see or receive anything of or by themselves. Right. Is that the case with you as well? Uh, no, no. Like, are you are you saying like, you know, for me to hear from myself? Mm hmm. Um, no, um, because before, you know, even though I had, I had that gift, uh, and or at least I noticed it in junior mm-hmm. high, mm-hmm. I went through a very difficult training process. God mm-hmm. took me through a very difficult training process, sure. which number one, he taught me how to hear him because, uh, you know, okay. the hearing is not just about what you hear in your ear is uh, mm-hmm. like in visions, dreams. Uh, you know, impressions. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, you like name it, you know, any of that. So he had to like, when I first started hearing uh, him tell me things, mm-hmm. I would see scriptures, or I would see wow. uh, some kind of a chapter in a book. Right. And then I would go there and read it. And it would coincide exactly with what I was hearing him tell me. Mm-hmm. So after a while, then it turned into seeing visions, mm-hmm. uh, then it turned into dreams. Um, Uh Then it became like, you know, having an actual encounter where, you know, it would be like, okay, I, I know, I know someone is here. I can feel the person's hand on me. I can feel the heat. I can smell the perfume. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can smell the different scents, like different scents represent different, you know, different smells represent different things that, that he, he kind of brings, you know, Mm -hmm. in your presence. So, um, but there is still a long, long ways um, to, to still learn, you know, but these are the, the things that he took me through. And then obviously, like I tell people, cause this isn't just, well, okay. Cause I, I think, I think people who have our, our abilities or our, our gifts, a lot of them, they take it for granted because it has mm-hmm. not been like coveted mm-hmm. uh, because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's more about like, you know, you hear about all these big time guys that are out there doing whatever they see this and see this, but mm-hmm. eventually what's going to happen is they're, you know, like I, I would, like I would say the oil in the lamp will, will like run out mm-hmm. because as, as things get more and more critical in society, mm-hmm. you cannot rely on, 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 on just the same old, same old, you need to wow. basically become somebody who has paid the price in a sense that's good who has allowed themselves to get beat down to the core of like literally be under the the, the finger of god like mm-hmm. like where he he just he really puts you through like i i i call it that burning bush experience sure 
and if you don't have that, um, I don't think you can you are going to be able to really do what the people uh, that you're sent to are are, are in need of. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. So I mean, it's it's amazing to me because it's a wonder you're not speaking to lots of pastors. You know, again, <laughs> going back to that stage that you're on, your platform that you are on. Yeah. Were you called or did you just go? These are just questions I ask. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Well, look. It, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Coach G. Well, uh, you know, the. I mean, when I like I said, when I first started, I was in the church and I spoke a lot to ministers back mm -hmm. then. I would see stuff and I would tell them about it. Uh, but I felt like I had like I was being called more to the outside mm -hmm. of the church. And mm -hmm. that's where my focus has been. And one of the things that the church uh, does is it kind of restricts you and says you can't go here. You can't go there. You can't talk to these types of people. And so mm -hmm. I have been able to reach across that border. Right. And not necessarily bringing my religion first, mm -hmm. but bringing more of my the just the just the love of God, just the the yeah. that God cares about you. God has a purpose for your life. You know, God wants okay. you to be on that platform that He called you to be on, yeah. and and just you know coming out. Anything you you say to somebody, even if it's a tough thing for them to hear, mm -hmm. it has to come. It has to come out of love. Yeah, and that's, that's yeah, so that's, good. The, that's the focus. Yeah. And I think too, that's where we met, we miss the mark. Sometimes we may come out of ourselves, we may come out of our our own filters, but we barely come from that place of love to say, "I care for you." God cares for you. You're not by yourself. You know, right. you you can right. do this. I, I love knowing that. You guys, look, if y'all are enjoying the conversation as much as I am, regardless of what Coach G says, we're putting all of his contact information in the description. So his little secret is out. Y'all will be able to find him and reach out to him. And who knows? Maybe you get to work with him. Maybe you don't. I don't know. But Coach G, before I let you go, <laughs> we have to play our game. It's super simple. The game is called This or That. And I'm going to give you the choice of two different things. And you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, flowers or plants? Plants. Hmm. Hotel or tent? A hotel. Me too. I'm so glad to hear you say that. I don't understand the camping people. Anyway, moving no, on. No, that's not me. That's not me, me either. <laughs> Water park or amusement park? Amusement park. Okay. Practical joker or I don't play like that? Practical joker. I'm surprised, but I can see that. Candlelight or moonlight? Moonlight. Okay. Are you a planner or you make it up as you go? Make it up as I go. Me too. Yay, spontaneity. <laughs> <laughs> do you go all day or do you need a nap? I go all day. Okay. Is When you're speaking, is it pecan or pecan? Pecan. Okay. <laughs> when you meet somebody, what do you notice first, their eyes or their smile? Their eyes. Okay. Are you a words of affirmation person or an acts of service kind of guy? Acts of service kind of guy, I say, yeah, acts of service. Okay, you weren't really sure about that. What, 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 what was the thought right there? Because uh, I think I'm both, but I think acts of service. Is more of your yeah. thing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And finally, what would you tell your younger self now? Uh, accept your, your good and your bad. Wow. Don't, don't try to, don't try to to sever them because they're a part of you. Uh, I mean, a lot of people, you know, I've gotten a lot of flack for wearing this uh, yin and yang necklace. Mm -hmm. This is why I wear it because it's, it represents that dark and that white, you yeah. know, and it's like the good and the bad. It reminds me of, you know, that's just who I am. Yeah. And and if, it, and if one was missing, I wouldn't be who I am today. That's true. Yeah. I have a friend that said one time, long time ago, and it stuck with me that we are all God's sheep, but we have wolf tendencies. <laughs> yes, exactly. Don't we? Don't we? I love it. I love it. Yeah. Coach G, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. 
I, I hope you all do reach out to him because needless to say, he's got a lot to say. Y'all, that's <laughs> it for this time, but we'll see you next time on Extra.